Welcome back, everyone. We are here to start you on your road to factoring. Uh, we're going to introduce greatest common factor and how to do that in algebra. Just a quick reminder before we start that you know we start out as kids multiplying something like 3 times 7 we get 21 remember that factoring is going to be the opposite of multiplying or the opposite of distributing um, and so that's the concept we're going for here our first example we're just going to look at first of all common factors of 12 and 30 so you might think about what are the factors of 12 and you might say well of course 1 goes into anything and 2 will go into 12 and maybe you can list these uh, 3 goes 3 times 4, so 4 also goes. If I think about 5 does not go into 12, uh, 6, 2 times 6 is 12, and then if I think 7, 8, 9, all the way up to 12, none of those will go in until we hit 12 itself. So those are the factors of 12. If I look at 30, it has quite a few. Uh, 1 will go in, 2 will go in, 3 will, but 4 will not. Uh, 5 times 6 is 30, so 5 and 6 both go in. And then the next one that we get actually is 10. And then after 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, none of those go. 15 does go, 2 times 15, and then obviously 1 times 30. Uh, once you get halfway, you know you can just do 1 times the, the last one there. So if we're looking at just common factors, of course 1 is going to be a common factor always. Uh, 2 and 3 are also common factors. Uh, 4 and 5 are not on both lists, but 6 is on both lists. So those are the common factors. If we say what is the greatest common factor, then when we're looking at both these lists, we're trying to figure out the largest thing that goes into both of them. So the greatest common factor of those would be the biggest thing on both lists, which is 6. You can also use the prime factorization method uh, if the numbers are especially large. 12 and 30 aren't that big. You could probably just sort of hunt around and guess and check a little bit and get those. But if you have really large numbers, maybe a prime factorization tree, which was in our previous video. So you might want to check that out. Okay, so moving along to algebra then, we're gonna have some of our terms having x in them, right? So if I look at the greatest common factor of 6x and 24, if you notice in both of these terms here, I don't have an x in both of them, but I do have a number in both of them. Uh, I have a coefficient of 6 here. This is just a constant 24. Uh, they don't have an x in common, so x will not be part of the common factor. But 6 and 24 do have common factors, and the biggest thing that goes into both of them is actually 6. So the greatest common factor of 6x and 24 is also 6. If we look at the next one, the greatest common factor of these three terms, we have 9x cubed. 15x squared, and 12x. So we look at, maybe first let's look at the coefficients. We have a 9, we have a 15, and a 12. And so for each of these we say, what is the biggest thing that will go evenly into 9, 15, 12? The answer there is 3, so 3 is going to be part of our greatest common factor. I look at then the variable part, and I look at the x cubed, the x squared, and the x, and I say, what do they all have in common? Uh, x cubed is the biggest thing, but they don't have that many x's in them. They all do have at least a single x in them. This one has two copies of x in it. This one has three copies. They all have at least an x. So in this one, the greatest common factor of these three is 3x. Let's look at how we will actually pull out some greatest common factors and do some actual factoring here. So if I'm looking at what is the greatest common factor and I want to factor it out, so here I just have what I've written before, 6x and 24. Now I'm seeing it as two separate terms separated by addition. We want to remember that terms are separated by add or subtract. So this 6x is a term and this 24 is a term here. So like before, we said that 6 was the greatest common factor. So we will go ahead and say pull out the greatest common factor of 6 and then we'll start some parentheses and we will say what is left over in each term. So you can think of this a couple of different ways. You can either think I factored out 6, so that's really like dividing by 6. So you can take each of these terms and divide by 6 and say what's left over. Another way to do it, which is the way I'm going to talk through it as I progress through examples, is, okay, I've pulled out 6 as the greatest common factor. 6 times what will give me each term that I have left over? Okay, so if I do that, I say 6 times what would give me 6x? And the answer is x, so I write down x. 
I have plus, so I go ahead and put my add there, and then I say 6 times what would give me 24, and 6 times 4 would give me 24. So I know the answer, once I've factored the greatest common factor of 6, is 6 times the quantity x plus 4. Let's do a similar thing. We already know what the greatest common factor is here because we did it on the last page. Uh, but if we look at these three terms, again, terms are separated by add and subtract. So 9x cubed is all one term. 15x squared is all one term. So is 12x. We already know that 3 and x are part of the greatest common factor. So we go ahead and factor out 3x, and we say 3x times what will give us each term here. So do it one piece at a time if you're not sure. 3 times what will give me the 9, and the answer is 3 times 3 will give me 9 x times what will give me the x cubed part of the first term? Well, I have one copy of x that I've pulled out, so to make three copies of x, I will need two more copies of x in the first term, so that will give me an x squared. I go ahead and put down my plus, and I say 3x, the greatest common factor, times what will give me 15x squared. Well, 3 times what gives me 15? Just do the coefficient part first. 3 times 5 would give me the 15, and then x times what would give me the x squared? So I have one copy here, I have two copies here, so I need another x to multiply 3x by to give me the x squared. Okay, and then last, we'll put our plus down, and we say 3 time, 3x times what gives me 12x. Well, 3 times what gives me 12? Answer is 4. And then we look and say, well, x times what would give me x? Well, times 1. Times 1 doesn't really change anything. We could write 4 times 1, but that's really just going to be 4. So since we don't need any additional copies of x, we're going to go ahead and close our parentheses. So our factored version of this is going to be 3x times the quantity, 3x squared plus 5x plus 4. Okay, two more examples here. So I've got three terms. And so I look first at the coefficients 30 and 60 and 45. And if I give you a second to think about it, what is the largest factor that will go evenly into 30, 60, and 45? And the answer is 15. And now we look at the variable part of each term, right? So x to the 4, x to the 3, x squared. They all have at least two copies of x, right? They all have at least x squared in them. And now I begin my parentheses, already saying that 15x squared is the greatest common factor. I say, first the coefficient, 15 times what gives me 30? 15 times 2 gives me 30. x squared times what would give me x to the 4? Well, I have two copies here. I need four copies total, so I need two more copies of x to multiply by. I have a sign of plus there, so I'll put down my add. 15 times what gives me 60? Well, 15 times 4 gives me 60. And then x squared times what gives me x cubed? I would need one more copy of x, so we'll put an x there. Last, 15x squared times what gives me negative 45x squared? So first thing I notice, I have a subtract here, so I'll go ahead and put down minus. 15 times what gives me 45? The answer is 3 x squared times what gives me x squared? The answer is 1. I don't need any additional copies of x, so we'll go ahead and leave that. Times 1 won't change that. So we get 15x squared as a GCF. Leftover is 2x squared plus 4x minus 3, and that'll be our answer for that one. For the last one here in this video, 16x to the 5 minus 20x to the 4 plus 28x cubed, or x to the third. So greatest common factor, if I look at 16 and 20 and 28, maybe we can see that the thing that is largest that goes into all of them is 4. And then they all have at least part of their variable expression at least x to the third, or x cubed. So we'll go ahead and write that down. That is our greatest common factor. And now we say 4 times what is 16? Answer is 4. x cubed times what gives us x to the 5? We would need two more copies of x to make x to the 5th. Put down the minus that's here. 4 times what gives us 20? Answer is 5 x cubed times what gives us x to the 4? We would need one more copy of x, so we'll put down a single x there. Copy down the add. 4 times what will give us 28? The answer is 7.
And then x cubed times what gives us x cubed? The answer is 1 times 1 wouldn't change the 7, so we will leave it as is. So we pulled out a uh, greatest common factor of 4x cubed. Left over is 4x squared minus 5x plus 7. Uh, check out our next video. We have some more examples about greatest common factor doing a couple similar to this and then some ones that are more complicated than this as well. All right, good luck with this.